An emergency meeting of South Korea's National Security Council, held hours after Pyongyang launched an intercontinental ballistic missile, or ICBM. It's the first such missile test in more than four years. The government urges North Korea to immediately stop actions that raise tensions on the Korean peninsula and cause regional instability, and return to diplomatic solutions as soon as possible. Previous ICBMs launched by North Korea have been tipped with super-large heavy warheads capable of striking the United States. Japan says this latest test shows North Korea's technology has advanced. Based on the fact that the missile this time flew higher than an altitude of 6,000 kilometers and much higher than the launch of the intercontinental ballistic missile Hwesong-15 in November of 2017, we think the launch this time involves a new model of an ICBM-class missile. For years, attempts to dismantle North Korea's nuclear and ballistic missile programs have failed. In 2018, the leaders of South and North Korea signed an agreement outlining steps to denuclearize the peninsula, but tensions persist. A year later, Donald Trump became the first sitting U.S. president to set foot inside North Korea and met its leader, Kim Jong-un. Their meetings were historic, but failed to produce a result. North Korea has continued to launch short-range ballistic missiles. Facing an economic crisis because of international sanctions and the pandemic, analysts say the show of military muscle may be intended as a morale boost at home and to show the world it's a force to be reckoned with. It's clear that the Joe Biden administration is not willing to um, enter any negotiations with North Korea, unlike President Trump. Uh, and that's kind of antagonizing Pyongyang. So Pyongyang is responding in the, in the way that it knows how, which is to cause instability across the Indo-Pacific and uh, launch the series of missile tests. South Korea responded by also firing missiles. It said it wanted to demonstrate its strength and ability to punish. Victoria Gatenby, Al Jazeera.